calculating slope. You may remember something called the slope intercept formula, or form. That was y equals mx plus b. You also may remember point slope form. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And then, on the homework over the weekend, we practiced finding the slope from a line. Right? So if I have a line with these two points on it, the slope of this is up one, over one. Or just one. So we've seen slope before in these three different ways. Okay? In these equations, slope is m. The slope is the steepness of a graph. Right? It tells us how steep our graph is going to be. There's actually a way that we can just simply calculate the slope between any two points. And that's called the slope formula. It looks like this. Usually we're going to say m equals, because m stands for slope. And there's two ways of writing it. We can write delta y over delta x with a delta, this is a Greek letter, stands for change in. The change in y over the change in x. Right? How much does y change? That's how much it goes up over how much does x change? That's how much it goes over. Yeah. Or, and this form is going to be a little bit more helpful to you on your homework tonight, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. These are really the same thing. Change in math means different. Change is a difference. So that means that we have to subtract. So first we're going to look at how this applies to a graph. Since we've already kind of done that. But then we're going to look, what if you don't even have a graph? Right. So let's say we had a point right here. And then a second point right here. Our slope is the change in y over the change in x. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Let's look at the point on the left first. What is the change in y we get from here to here? We have to remember which one is the y-axis, which is this one. And this one is the x-axis. So change in y means how far do I go just on the y-axis? It's really the same thing as asking how far do I go up or how far do I go down. And it's also the same thing as rise in the slope rise over run. So from here to here is down one, right? Negative one. That's my change in y. Change in y is down one. Negative one. And then the denominator is my change in x. So how far do I go just along the x-axis? So I start here, I go one, two, three, that's my change in x. So the slope of this graph 
is negative 1 over 3. Okay? Change in y over change in x. First point, and here's our second point. I'm going to ask you the same question. What is the slope? I better draw a line first. What is the slope of this line? In other words, what is the change in y and what is the change in x? So from this point to this point, how much does y change by? Well, we go from 1 to 0, to negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Y changed by 1, 2, 3, 4. My change in Y is 4. And what is my change in X? I start here, and I'm just going over 1, right? So my change in X is, uh, oops, my change in Y is negative, right? Because I went down. My change in x is 1. So I have a slope of negative 4 over 1, which is just negative 4. That's my slope there. What if, instead of giving you a graph, can I erase this graph? What if instead of giving you a graph, I just named the points? What if I said, what is the slope between the point 1, 2 and 3, 7. Calculate the slope between these two points. Take a look at this on a graph. Where is 1, 2 on a graph? Well, we go over 1, up 2, and we put a point. This is the point 1, 2. Right there. Where's the point 3, 7 on this graph? Yeah, we just go over 3 and up 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is the point. So now that I have it on here, I could calculate the slope, right? Change in y, we went up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 between these two points. And we go over 1, 2. So my slope is 5 halves. I did that by plotting the points. But there's actually a way that we can do it without plotting the points. Does anyone notice any patterns about these numbers and these numbers? Look just at the y's. Remember, this is the change in y up here at the top. And in, this, in the coordinate points, the first point is x, and the second one is y. So look just at the y's, 2 and 7, and somehow we get 5. Let's do another one. We're going to look for a pattern. Calculate the slope between 0, 2, and 3, 5. So let's plot them. 0, 2 is right here. 3, 5 right here. Change in y, we go up 1, 2, 3. Change in x, we go over 1, 2, 3. Up 3, over 3. So our slope is 3 over 3. Any patterns here? Look just at the y's. So 2, 5, and somehow we got 3. 
What's the pattern? You subtract the smaller number from the larger number. Right. So we subtracted 2 from 5 to get 3. Over here, we subtracted 2 from 7 to get 5. Huh. Wait a second. Look at this formula that I gave you. What does it say to do in the top? take one of the y's and we subtract the other one. Oh, okay. Yeah, great observation. Now if we look at the denominator, right, we do the same thing with the x's. Did I do the same thing with the x's here? Is 3 minus 1, 2? Does this pattern work for the x's? 3 minus 0 is? Is this my final slope, 3 over 3? Yeah, that equals 1. So this would be my final answer here. I would start out by saying 3 over 3, but I would simplify that to be 1. Let's try out this pattern. Now we don't have to draw a graph anymore. We can just look at those two points, and we can figure out the slope. Find the slope between, I'm sort of simplifying this, usually it will be written, find the slope of the line that connects these two points, or something like that. But I think you guys know what I mean when I say that. So negative, actually let's not do a negative, let's do it. 2 comma 7 and 3 comma 10. All right. This is a really important first step. Please make sure you guys write this example in your notes because this is exactly what I want you to do on the homework. Now that we've kind of figured out the pattern to it, I want you to have a record of this. Okay? So the key step here to me is you're gonna label the you're gonna label the points x1, comma, y1 and x2, comma, y2. That's going to help you use this formula down here. And I'm usually going to choose the bigger numbers to be the x2 and y2. It doesn't matter if it's first or second. I just want my bigger numbers to be x2 and y2. All right, now I just do what we said. y2 minus y1, so that's going to be 10 minus 7. And look, I'm subtracting the smaller number from the bigger number. The reason we do that is we'll get more positive numbers in the end. And then over x2 minus x1. So I take 3 minus 2. One thing I want you to notice, x1 has to be with y1. And x2 has to be with y2. So there will be some times when you have to subtract a bigger number from a smaller number. We'll do an example like that in a second. But in this case, in both the top and the bottom, I'm subtracting the smaller number. But I only set it up that way for the top. I'm setting it up so that in the top, the bigger number is y2. Okay? Yeah. Um, on our homework, is it going to be like this? Because I'm understanding this way better than I did with the graphing. Cool. Yeah, this is what you can do on your homework. Okay. So 10 minus 7 is? 3. 3 minus 2 is? 1. 1. What is 3 over 1? 3. 3. Right, let's do a second example. Example number 2. I'm going to take an example from your homework. So when you get to it on your homework, you can just write the answer. All right. Let's say we have these two points. 19 comma negative 16 and negative 7 comma negative 15. Whoa. Now all of a sudden we've got negative numbers. That's okay. We know how to add and subtract negative numbers. 
can do this. Can I erase example one? All right. Let me make sure this is on the screen. Ah. Nineteen, comma, negative sixteen, and negative seven. First thing that we do is label the x one, y one, x two, y two. Okay, so I've labeled my points. Now, I'm going to use this formula right here. What is y2? Negative 15. What is y1? Negative 16. So, minus negative 16. When you do this homework, you're going to get to practice this a lot. Minus a negative is? Nice. Yeah, it's a plus over x2, negative 7, minus x1, which is 19. Okay. On your homework, if you want to use a calculator to do this, that's fine. Okay, you may use a calculator. So you would type in negative 15 plus 16, that would give you 1. Negative 7 minus 19, that would give you negative 26. So the slope is 1 over negative 26, or you could write negative 126, whatever you would like. Okay, I would recommend that you guys use a calculator at this stage. Okay, try it first, but then check your work with a calculator. It's been a little while since we reviewed these rules for Wait. adding and subtracting and other things. Yeah? Negative 15 plus 16. Oh, oh no, I get it. Sorry. See it? Yeah, I did my thing wrong. Sorry, I get it. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Let's do another one. This one's also from your homework. Oh. Step one, label the points. X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Step two, here's our formula. What is Y2? Look up here, negative seven. What is Y1? Negative 19. So remember, minus negative 19, that turns into plus 19. x2 is negative 2 minus 1. At this stage you could use a calculator. You will get 12 over negative 3. And then you want to simplify that. So 12 over negative 3 negative four. is negative 4. Just the number one and two on the homework. We have almost ten minutes. 